Yes, I've been sitting here listening to the conversation, and I'm a bit surprised. You are an elderly statesman, uh, so you, you should sit the, and listen to the, the young ones. The, the reason why I'm, <laughs> I'm very surprised uh, is that governance is a serious matter. And when it comes to the life of the people, you don't play games with it. So when a matter such as taxes that affects the citizenry is being presented to the vice president and somebody wants me to believe that he was playing with it, he was joking with it, that is very, very serious. The people are suffering, and they say, why don't you abolish it now? And you are joking? People are being haunted by claims they made about themselves, and it is turning out that they didn't have an idea of what they were talking about. And that is what the problem is. I heard my colleague mention that if I were to become a flag bearer, Chances are that I will present my own manifesto other than the, the, our flag bearer. Mm -hmm. I want to put it on record that that manifesto that was submitted by the NDC, is not just the flag bearer's manifesto. It is a collective responsibility of the members of our political party. Right. I played a key role in developing that manifesto. And I want to say it here now that I would have no manifesto other than the one that we put together for His Excellency the President, I mean, John Dramani Mahama. If they would have a different manifesto based on who becomes the flag bearer, that is their problem. Mm. But our process for crafting the manifesto goes through a process of collective responsibility. And we go to listen to the people and we develop a manifesto that reflects what the people think will address their concerns. So let nobody assume that if Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is having a different thought from his president, that applies to everybody. It doesn't apply to me. It doesn't apply to our political party because our manifesto is a collective document. And mm -hmm. I want to make that clear. The second one is that I am surprised that somebody says he is playing an advising role and yet claiming ownership of key policies that have been implemented. Has he ever produced, you see, you don't offer advice in government verbally. You offer those pieces of advice by writing your advice. Have you ever seen advice from Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to the president mm -hmm. on Ghana card? Have you ever read the advice of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia on digitalization? So on what basis is he claiming ownership of those matters? Because he, he mentions them. So, as somebody who advises the state, what was his advice to the president and the cabinet of Ghana on the IMF program that we entered into? Don't forget that, that he has not signaled that he would review the IMF program. And yet, he is reviewing the IMF program in his manifesto. You see, the taxes that he says he will abolish. Mm -hmm. When we entered into IMF, one of our biggest problems was fiscal consolidation. And the government put together a revenue or a resource mobilization strategy. That resource mobilization strategy included the e-levy, included all the taxes that he claims to be abolished. On the basis of that, the government signed an agreement evidencing that those strategies will lead to fiscal consolidation. And it is on the basis of that you have been given $3 billion. So you cannot now sit here, say that you are going to do things contrary to the international agreement that you signed. Are you now scamming the IMF? <laughs> have, you changed, have you changed the revenue mobilization strategy that you presented to anchor the IMF program? By the way, the revenue mobilization strategy went to the economic management team where he was a chair. He should show us his advice to cabinet. We said, remove those taxes. And, the, that, the and, and, that, the... and, and that the cabinet did not listen to him. He should show that document. You don't make advice verbally in government. You write. Mm. Have you seen that, that, that advice of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's economic management team? Mm -hmm. proposing to cabinet that those taxes should not be part 
of our revenue mobilization strategy to the IMF. What are you saying? So you go around, go and put taxes on our people, you get approved by the IMF, you receive 3 billion, out of which now you have received 1.520 billion. Now you come and stand before the people and say, oh, when I come, I am not going to uh, 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 continue, I'm not going to, I'm going to abolish them. Who are you deceiving? Are you scamming them? That well, is my, my next point. Well, you see, he, he makes a point I, I, that I, I, yes, he agrees. I, yeah, so, so let me ask this question. I have heard people say that well, as a vice president, he doesn't have the powers. Mm -hmm. But well, the mandate that, that the, the president has given him, can he know? Ah, did Akufado promise one village, one down? Yes, he did. No, it was Baumia who appeared in Tumu. And they took him to an irrigation site. He was excited at what he saw. And he said, I will do this in every village. That was not Akufado. Okay? The person that doesn't have power got that implemented by the government. So, it was Mahmoud Baumia who went to meet party people and promised them that when, I, when we win power, I will make sure that one million comes to your constituency for you people to share. That was the origin of one million per constituency. Was that the present uh, uh, promise? So it mean? was Mahmoud Baumia who had said he will move the economy from taxation to production. Was it not implemented by Akufado? It was the same Mahmoud Baumia who told us that when they get into power, go and read the, the, the lectures that were delivered by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia at Central University College. Go and pick the MPP manifesto on the economy. It is that lecture that metamorphosed into the MPP manifesto. Mm -hmm. Is that not it? So whose manifesto was it? Akufado or Baumia? So those people who are trying to help the man run away from some of the obnoxious policy prescriptions that led us to this. <laughs> Cannot exonerate Baumia from... Ah, why? He, was, he didn't know that he was the vice president when he said that the economic management team that he led was the best ever. What is the use of an adversary body, no matter how strong it is? We are not in this country. When he said that Alan Tramantin as if they were the panacea, he made us believe that because of these people, because of these Harvard-trained guys, Ghana will not land where we have landed. And this is where they landed us. And he, the leader, a Simon Fraser scholar, should be trusted. We have trusted him to have our parents. Why do you want now, to mention their school no, It is very important. <laughs> it is very important because, you see, <laughs> Professor Jambo, some people believe that they behave as if when they went to school and they were taught by the professors. The professors all died and didn't get to teach anybody again. <laughs> so they are the only people who are the recipitary of academic and professional knowledge. <laughs> but, and these are the people who have led us here. We must mention their qualifications for people to know that, look, these guys are carrying very hefty uh, uh, schools along. And this is where they led us. When somebody says that, oh, he cannot do it because uh, the budget is in the name of the president. Why? Well, we know it's in this country in 2019. When Dr. Mahmoud Baumia said he was going to have a stakeholder engagement as part of the economic management team for the first time, you remember? Mm -hmm. That was that uh, uh, engagement he turned into a lecture. When he was struggling to explain that it was warped logic to say that when the fundamentals are weak, and his own people were laughing. The head of the economic management teams were laughing. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Out of the blue, uh, Baumia announced that the taxes that had been agreed in the budget, the president's budget, Baumia was varying that budget at that stakeholder engagement. You say he was varying? Baumia came and announced that the taxes that we have agreed and approved in parliament for uh, import duty to be collected at the port. He was so go to give him 50% discount on the benchmark for selected goods and services. The benchmark violation policy? I'm saying that he, those things were already in the budget. The president budget as they claim now. But Baumia was on a platform saying that he was giving 50% benchmark 
discount for selected goods and services and 30% for vehicles. So why can't you do it now? Is it not the same budget that was approved then in 2019? It was approved in 2018, November, December, and in 2019, July, August. Uh, Bahomia was busy varying that agreement. So you're saying what? The argument I that am the simply budget saying that it is not true. Does not mean it that. is not true that because he is the president and because the budget has already agreed revenue measures. Those revenue measures cannot be changed now by the vice president who has a track record of changing those revenue numbers. Track record in our country. Speaking to facts. Ah, uh, uh, something surgeon. That, 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 that building. Physician, 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 surgeon. Surgeon. That was where he did it. Is it not true that he gave discount on benchmark values which affected the revenue Yield for the year. Maybe they are discussed and oh, just, just, just announced. The important thing is that he announced the president did not bring any memo to cabinet, uh, to, 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 to parliament. But you are not a member of um, uh, parliament. Parliament, Parliament. the president came with his budget. We approved the budget. And somebody that we claim doesn't have the power was busy announcing something different. As part of his ENT engagement, though, he was varying our budget. The president's budget. So he can do it. So the, you are saying, <laughs> I'm coming. to the extent that Dr. Bano says because this 2024 budget has been approved. Already. And it was 2020, and 2019 budget approved in December 2018 that he was varying in November 2019. What are you saying? And implementation started immediately. So what is he saying? He hasn't done it before. The reason he can't do it now. It's because he's collecting $3 billion from those taxes. As a result of the revenue mobilization strategy, he championed at <coughs> EMT, <coughs> submitted to cabinet, and cabinet through the president submitted to IMF for our fiscal consolidation effort. So that's the e so there. All, all, all the things he say you will remove, they are already in there. He took that to IMF to convince the IMF that on the basis <coughs> of that, Ghana should re receive 13, uh, $3 billion. And an additional one, uh, what do you call it, uh, $5.4 billion from the World Bank. And receive in total over $13.5 billion from creditors in debt restructuring. That was what he did. So is he now scamming them that only came to deceive you? Have you seen in his manifesto that he is going to review the IMF program? So on what basis are you still going to run a program you were part of in uh, approving, collecting all the proceeds, and suddenly now proposing things that are outside the program? Look, gold for oil, you sign up with IMF. That as a result of this IMF program, one of the things they should do at the Bank of Ghana is to stop the gold for oil. You agree. You have received $1.5 billion already. For agree, and you are looking for another 1.5 billion for agreeing. For agreeing, the World Bank is giving you 4.5 billion dollars. You agreed. Creditors through the debt restructuring are giving you 13.5 billion because you agreed. To face and now you the, come, to, yes, to and now to come and tell us that program. you expand what you have gone to promise. How, how is that possible? So the promise was what? To phase out the Gold for Oil program? To, because it is not just phase out. It is because there are transitional agreements. Mm -hmm. So the IMF says, when you complete these agreements, scrap the Gold for Oil. Don't go back to it. Now you come and tell Ghanaian that my solution to dealing with the stability of the city is that I will ignore the IMF and I'll go ahead and scam them. And you think that Ghanaians don't think will fall for this. Clearly, it means that you don't have a solution. Do you understand? I am saying that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is being haunted by his own standards that he claimed we should hold him to. He told us that he was an economic risk kid. He was roaming at Malata Market, telling us how prices were rising. Did he know he would be a vice president, a driver's beat? He was the one telling us how to restore the value of the city. Didn't you know he was going to only be a vice president and a driver's mate? 
as a matter of fact, since he became vice president, he has never told us that he was a driver's mate until now that he wants to, be, to get power. He kept telling us that he was the best uh, vice president that has ever lived. And you are appropriating the president's achievement for yourself without demonstrating to us that there's any advice from your EMT that you can lay claim that led to any policy, except you telling us what you want to tell us. Jampo, mm -hmm. you know, Prof, I was very happy when we were talking about the marking that they were marking and saying that they have scored 80%. Go and read the 2017 budget presented by the president. Now they say that the budget is for the president, which is okay. So presented by Akufa. <laughs> In that budget, if you go and read from page 80 to 83, just three pages, it won't be difficult to read. Find out what they reported as the roads that were constructed by the NDC for 20, ending 2016. Mm -hmm. They had to give a record, an update, yeah. before telling us what they want to do. Yeah. In those updates, just uh, 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 what do you call it? Routine maintenance alone, we did 10,000 kilometers in that document. Reshaping and redraving, we did 16,000, and some people are here boasting of 12,000 and telling us that it is the best that has ever happened in our country. His Excellency John Roman Muhammad didn't write that budget. Sir okay. Tepe didn't write that, that, that budget. It is Ken Oforiata trumpeting the achievement of His Excellency John Romani Muhammad in the 2017 budget. And in mm. that budget document, we calculated 41,000 kilometers. So please, go and hide that your 12,000 somewhere. <laughs> you are retrogressing. You are moving us backwards. And you see, you think that when you lie so repeatedly, it becomes the truth. Have you to be hearing these 12,000 kilometers? Did you ever know that in their own budget that they presented, they were touting John Mahama of doing 41,000 kilometers by 2016? And this is in the 2017 17 budget. by, I said, particularly page 80 to 83. Where are you? 